you are about to enter a great adventure. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Strutting from Gorilla. I'm Mikey Cash. Next to me as always is Big Vito. Now we were going to have Mike Sarge Riley with us for a WrestleMania preview episode, but with all our schedules kind of uh, not aligning this week, we decided to pull an audible and give you guys a really fun episode about WrestleMania memories. So in this episode, Vito and I are going to talk about uh, the very first WrestleMania that we ever watched live. So we're going to talk a little bit about it, what we remember from it. We're going to share some just kind of fun facts that we found from uh, just some articles we found online. And I think it'll be a really cool episode. And we're kind of hoping that when we post this, people can sort of share what their WrestleMania memories are, too. So we hope you join in the fun with us and as we get closer and closer to the show of shows. So uh, let's just jump right in. Vito, how's it going, man? Rocking and rolling. Mikey Cash, ready to you know we're in WrestleMania season here, um, and I got to be be honest with you, it is hot in the wrestling world right now. I mean, between AEW and WWE, um, all things are pointing up. Like it is really, really good. The last episode of of Dynamite was really good. The last episode, uh, like I, this is hot off the presses. Raw on March twenty fifth unbelievably good unbelievably good and we were talking yeah. about this before the show but there's been a lot of issues with the way the rock has come back and he he's gone and gone against all the policies in wwe like the Vince McMahon policies and like it's been all over like the the dirt sites and um he actually commented on one of them and said it was like horse shit or whatever and um last night on raw it was like attitude era raw i mean people were saying stuff that they typically wouldn't say so um wrestlemania scene is in a, is in full swing and oh and the ending of raw unbelievable best ending of raw in the last 20 plus years so that's saying a lot i i, I don't give praise like this very often yeah. so um you know, I go back and watch it. Uh, if if you haven't seen Raw yet, um, I, I bet there's a lot of people on the internet that would, would agree with me. So I don't doubt it. That. I don't doubt it, dude. All right, well, that's a lot of that's high praise coming from Big Vito. He's been uh, a harsh critic for, I don't, for some time, like, like both of us. But yeah, I don't deal it out. I don't deal it out very often. So when I do, mm-hmm. you know, I, listen, I'm not saying everyone's going to agree with me because that's not always true. But in my opinion, it was very good. Um, well, like let's put this interesting way. man in the world. I, I'll give you one little little tidbit in it. They um, they used blood on Raw and didn't censor it um, hmm. in the last segment. Hmm. So, yeah, very good. Okay. All right, there's very some good. some fodder for the next episode. Yeah. Do, stay tuned next week. That is our WrestleMania preview with Sarge. Yep, and I don't think um, Mama Rhodes is is very happy right now. So, just okay, hard just times, see. hard times, bro. hard times, baby. Uh, all right, so let's uh let, let's dive right in. Um, oh, you know what? I can't believe I forgot to even say this during our intro. What am I doing? Okay, pay attention to the ticker down below. You you can find us all over the socials. Go to our YouTube channel, like us, subscribe. We're getting closer and closer to that triple digit mark, so we really appreciate the people that jumped on. Uh, yeah, like us and subscribe us, subscribe to us. We'd really love it. So, all right, without further ado, now. WrestleMania memories. Let's dive right in, Vito. So, right. Vito, I'm going to let you go first. What is your what is your first WrestleMania memory? Well, let me just say this. You, you know, um, when I think of WrestleMania, you know, the first thing that pops in my head, do you remember that? I think we played it on one of our episodes uh, mm-hmm. a few years ago. Um, but you remember the generic, like, da-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-
we went back and forth on this and um i thought about it afterwards because i thought wrestlemania 9 was the first one that i like remember but like if if you were going to say, Anthony, what's the first WrestleMania and you like vividly remember it, it would be WrestleMania 13. Um, and the only reason I remember this is because I remember WrestleMania 12 not seeing it. I remember like, I, I remember the Iron Man match and never being, I, I remember never seeing that and it being like the, the pinnacle of matches because it was so good. And the whole heat with Bret Hart and Sean and Sean Michaels after it, I I just remember I never saw that live, or I I never even saw that WrestleMania at one point. So, um, like, okay, well then, was it WrestleMania nine? Because I remember WrestleMania nine was more gimmicky, right? It was like the Undertaker came out there in Caesar's Palace, like kind of the old school character WWF type um type type wrestlemania and it's like it gets fuzzy but i i i went with wrestlemania 13 because i remember that being like the first one i saw and to to me that that's like the beginning of the attitude era so um we can we can talk about it in a minute but but what was yours uh so mine was actually it was wrestlemania 9 I have this vivid memory of going to my Uncle Bob's house. Shout out Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob. Hanging out in his basement. And I sat down in front of the TV. And I I think I was just taken aback by what I saw. And I'm going to show you what I saw. And this is what what just captivated me as a six going on seven-year-old. Unbelievable. I, I remember that that moment when I'm sitting in front of the TV, I'm just, I I can, I can like picture myself just on the floor, cross-legged watching that. And just like my mouth just being open. Like, what is that? So obviously I didn't come in at the very beginning of the show. We caught it like right in the middle. Yeah. He was about to fight giant Gonzalez, but Oh my gosh, just that for a kid being able to see that in that moment, like a character that was like so much bigger than life. I was like, who is this? What, like, why is this guy walking around with an urn? I just like, I really didn't know anything at the time. So it was really, really just such a, like a formative experience for me. And, and I think just kind of got me started on, on the road we're on today. And uh, what is it? 20, yeah, don't, don't age me 30. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 30 I some odd years later. All right, Jabroni. I thought about it, Mikey, and you're a few years older than me. So uh like I I I think WrestleMania 9, I, I definitely may not have watched that live. You know what? I know I didn't watch that live because I would have been a few years younger than you. And uh there's no way I remember that. So um, but no, that was a great WrestleMania, and I, I agree with you. I think as a kid that that's one that you know you, just the the aura of being at caesar's palace um was very unique and then they did such a great job of and and at that point people didn't know if it was fake or real like it, i mean i think people knew but nobody nobody knew right mm-hmm. and um yeah it uh which is kind of amazing that it lasted that long that people would actually still think it was real but hey you know this is the world we live in um sure. Sometimes there are a lot of puppets, but uh, it 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 is it it was a good WrestleMania. Um, lots of lots of stuff that went on there, uh, and and plus, forget about the Undertaker, but Giant Gonzalez, like you said, I mean, he was a spectacle in himself. Like just looking at the guy, it's true, it's true. He had that with that big bodysuit with the uh, with like the fur on it. I, yeah. I really don't know what they were implying, like that he was like some sort of Yeti man or something I, like that. But I, I don't know. But I don't know. Either way, it was it was just really a spectacle to watch. And I think that was the first time. Obviously, that was the first time for me that I ever saw that. But that's always been something that I really loved about wrestling was not just the story, but like the spectacle of it, too. I mean, that's that's what draws you in. Right. I mean, we can get caught up in this dirt sheet stuff and we still do from time to time. But like that stuff doesn't matter to me. I could care less about a star rating. I don't care about any of that stuff like what you're giving me on the screen. That's what I care about. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And at that time there were no dirt sheets. There was no internet um, that we were, we were, we were watching. It was all, 
it was all kayfabe and kayfabe was even better because you couldn't go and listen to the opinions of other people you couldn't search twitter you couldn't it, it, it was just a different different era right it was like the andre the giant spectacle era where like people all you always hear about andre the giant but you never saw him right because he wasn't even on tv so mm-hmm. you go to the event you see him and and th- this was one of the 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 better wrestlemanias for sure and um i mean i remember when i watched this uh obviously the main event was a big deal it was very odd it was a very odd main event between brett Hart, yokozuna and then hulk hogan comes back and like at the time nobody really understood what was going on why did you know brett hart win and then uh, right right brett hart won Mm -mm. and then no yokozuna won and then lost right away to hulk hogan that's what it was yes 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 yeah and um which is very odd but it was you know hulk i think that's kind of the the legend yeah. of Hulk Hogan, it, right? Well, there's kind of a it's funny that that you even see it as like it was a good show because for a lot of people, this is one of the worst WrestleManias of all time. I, there's there's so much there's so much story behind I think it, it, because of the ending, how bad it was. And and so I also think there was a lot more going on kind of behind the scenes, and we'll get to that in a second because we're gonna talk about some fun facts about each show. But um, I wanted to, to just show the folks here the VHS covers of both WrestleMania 9 and WrestleMania 13 because, I mean, just so badass. I know that the, the resolution probably could be better, but look at that. I mean, Bret Hart is all over this thing. And you know how much I love a good Bret Hart. Uh, yeah, I think, I, think, I think we all do. I also am a huge Bret Hart guy, so I, I get it. But what I find interesting about this Mikey is I feel like this is one of the this is a weird time for WWE right because WCW is in the fold and their Bischoff's taken over and their mm-hmm. I don't know if WCW at this point was I don't think they were taking over the ratings but they were definitely on the heels of WWE and and this is one of the last couple WrestleManias where it's kind of that character era of WWE mm-hmm. right where you know, you, WCW came up with the the phrase, this is where the big boys play, right? And and they were trying to get away from those different characters. Like, <laughs> I remember they had a guy, WWE, called the Friar. Do you remember, a Friar or something or other. I forget his How name. I, I don't remember that guy. Oh, yeah. But they had people like that. They had, you know, just, it was all like different characters. It was, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I get it. Like, as a kid, I loved that. And, and, but. It, it 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 had played its time and it was at right at the end there so yeah well i think from what i re- remember at the time i probably liked it as a kid you definitely did. and because that's exactly who they were catering to 100%. but w- one thing that i think i've started to realize about this particular one was this might have been significant in in the sense that this was the first time that you started to see like the crack in the armor for wwf in that these things weren't going to work forever and i think that's what it was it was like the beginning of that because the whole thing uh, obviously with the main event where bret hart loses and then hogan somehow just steps in and wins the title it's i mean what a weird way to end the show i mean look at that he's got the black eye I, it, oh, it, nothing about guy. it really made sense but at the time i can remember cheering because it just you were sort of conditioned right you just cheer for hogan hogan's coming out and you get you got to make sure that that you get behind him i mean he's all american the music's playing everyone's getting pumped up and i i i think that this this first wrestlemania really was that that first time where you're like okay things aren't gonna work this way forever um but you know, if I if I knew then what I know now, I would have been cheering for Brett, and I would have been very upset about this. Yeah, um, I mean, because you think about it at the time, you didn't know any of this stuff, and mm-hmm. you were just in awe of the show. But as you look back and you learn more, and stuff comes out, you know, it it definitely is a more controversial controversial WrestleMania. Yeah. Um, but but before we go any further, what were some of the matches on the card? I remember a, a couple because Shawn Michaels wrestled. Tatanka. Tatanka. That's who it was. Tatanka. Oh, there was love so Tatanka. Things that I forgot. I tried, I, I didn't get to finish all of it, but I was trying to rewatch some of it because I just wanted to refresh my memory. 
And there's a couple things that stand out. One is uh, that Luna Vachon was actually Shawn Michaels' manager in that opening match. She had like replaced Sherry, and Sherry comes back out, and the, those two start fighting. And it was and and the match he had with Tatanka was actually really good. Yeah, he, I remember they that. Put on yeah. like a really good show. And what I found out later from that article was one of these like fun facts about it was that this was the third consecutive WrestleMania that Michaels had opened. So he had opened, I think, WrestleMania seven and eight. The WrestleMania seven, he was with the Rockers and he fought Haku and Barbarian. And then in WrestleMania eight, he was he fought uh, Tito Santana. So this was kind of interesting that Michaels had already started developing a WrestleMania resume from Mr. Tech, WrestleMania, even breaking man. into his single stuff. So that was kind of cool. I didn't even realize that so and long. Then, and then WrestleMania ten, he had the ladder match with um, with Razor Ramon. Razor Ramon. Did they open that? I I don't remember. No, no, no. It was sort of like more in the middle. Yeah. But speaking of Razor Ramon, he was actually on the card. I I I don't even remember who he wrestled, but the match was over in like four minutes. He basically um, came out, destroyed him, left. It was quick. I don't I don't remember who it was. Was it Jake the Snake? I don't think it was Jake. Uh but I think um another another match that kind of stands out that I had just finished seeing was uh it was Mr. Perfect versus the narcissist Lex Luger. <laughs> and man, poor Lex, he just he was doomed from the start with that kind of gimmick. It was so bad. But, you know, he tried. He, I give him credit. And Mr. Perfect was like the perfect, quote unquote, opponent huh. for somebody in that position. I didn't even realize I was doing that just now until I started talking. But he was kind of the Kurt Angle of that generation. You know what I mean? Like, just a very technically sound wrestler. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, I do, but I was pleasantly surprised by how much i kind of liked evil doink i thought he had a match and um he fought against crush who for some reason like it says crush and then on the back there's like a sunset with a bird and i don't even understand like i'm trying to understand his ring attire and i'm watching it the other night and i'm like talking to my wife i'm like what why does he have a sunset like it goes against the idea that he's coming out and he's going to crush you he's going to crush you while you're looking at a beautiful landscape i mean i don't know i don't know beautiful scenery while he crushes you who knows yeah i, I th- speaking of the scenery though like bobby the brain he and I, re- I i don't know where i remember this he came out on a camel backwards right? backwards i think him and what was it macho man did they do the commentary and maybe vince mcmahon too it was no it was bobby the brain heenan it was macho man and it was uh it was jr it was his first for a oh. yeah, it was his first night with the company. Which okay, so another fun fact here is that apparently at the time when Jr. was going from WCW to the WWF, he had had a radio show that was based out of Atlanta, I believe. And at the time, it was bankrolled by WCW. He used that radio show and had Vince McMahon. He had, I think, he had Hogan. He had a couple of other people that were on WrestleMania on that radio show to promote the WrestleMania nine show. So in a sense, WCW bankrolled some of the, the promotion for (laughs) WrestleMania nine at that time. So weird, weird times, man. Very weird. Very weird. Weird times. No, it was a a good one. It was a good one. And it was Bob Backlund that, um, Razor Ramon faced. Oh my gosh. Bob Backlund. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. And then I think Money Inc. Right when they were mm-hmm. on the were they on there? Was it uh, Ted DiBiase and um, and uh, Irvin R. Scheister? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think they were tag team champs. Anyways, um, I know what well, last interesting fact about that WrestleMania, and I don't know mm-hmm. why I remember this, but Bam Bam Bigelow was supposed to face Kamala and it never right. never happened because mm-hmm. they of time constraints so it got cut from the match which would have been a good match actually yeah I think so too yeah yeah, yeah. uh anyways great great WrestleMania um who was the was there a celebrity there too 
Did you say always had celebrities? Uh, they had Natalie Cole, who was a singer at the time. So, but okay. I don't remember otherwise. Yeah, so, it'll be like um, yeah, one day when they look back and Limp Biscuit is at WrestleMania seventeen or something. They're like, who the hell is Limp yeah. Biscuit? <laughs> <laughs> like, All huh? right. All right, so WrestleMania 13, um, yes. that's the one I remember the most. And uh, it's funny because you were over your uncle's and you kind of, he kind of introduced you into this. And mm-hmm. I remember when I was a kid, how I got introduced to wrestling was I went over to my uncle's one time and I was like real nervous about sleeping over there. I hated sleeping away from my house just like any other kid. And he threw on a VHS and it was um, one of the old uh, WWF home videos where they just like taped random things and I'll, I'll never forget the, the thing i remember most about it was that it focused on bret hart and it was all about the kiss my foot match with jerry lawler and i i just that was what opened me up to wrestling for some reason i don't know why but i watched it okay. fell in love with it um and i don't know if that was well before wrestlemania 13 i have no idea because that vhs could have been I could have watched it whenever. I just remember once I saw it, I was like, oh, I got to see more of this and started watching more and more and more. And um, I think WrestleMania 13 was the first <clears throat> pay-per-view that I watched. And um, that was the one that had Sid Vicious versus Undertaker. Undertaker won the belt. I think that mm-hmm. was the first time Undertaker main evented WrestleMania. Um, and uh, fun fact, Sid Vicious, uh, or Psycho Sid, whatever you want to call him, he was only part of two WrestleManias, and he main evented both of them. So main event, main event, uh, Psycho Sid. Um, I mean, two for two. Holy smokes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I've heard a lot of people say that WrestleMania 13 was not one of the best WrestleManias, actually the, the least purchased WrestleMania. Um yeah, because at that point, that's when WCW was taking over the ratings, and WWF was again. I consider this the, the, the I'm not gonna say this is where the Attitude Era started because we've talked about that. You can talk about a million different things, but this was realistically, I would say, the first WrestleMania on the start of the Attitude Era. It was, um, you know, I think the the match that ultimately everyone talks about is Bret Hart versus Stone Cold with the double turn. Um, unbelievable match and a uh, fun fact about that match is that everyone remembers you know the the bloody face of Stone Cold at the end and he passed out because it was a submission submission match and Ken Shamrock was the the um the referee and before the match Bret Hart told Stone Cold that he was going to blade him. So Bret Hart was the one that actually bladed Stone Cold and Stone Cold didn't want to do it. And he almost backed out of doing it uh, because technically they weren't supposed to do it. And it was against the rules and WWE right, to, blading to was. Cut yourself. Yeah. And they did it. And, you know, we all know how that turned out. It's an iconic photo and, and Vince McMahon must have not been too pissed off because it was, all over Stone Cold's DVDs and she had mm-hmm. shirts with it and, and whatnot. But ultimately, it was it, it could be one of the best matches of all time. I mean, it's not easy to pull off the double turn. We've talked about that match before. I'm not going to go too yep. much into it, but it was an unbelievable match. Um, there's some other really cool matches on there. Um, who I just blanked on the other matches. I know there was the Nation of Domination versus the road warriors and Ahmed Johnson and the nation of domination at that time was, um, Savio Vega crush and Farouk Mm -hmm. and Farouk actually dislocated his shoulder. He went over, like they did a move. He went, I think animal or Hawk threw him over the rope and he got tangled in the rope and dislocated his shoulder. But I believe that was a street fight. Um, what other matches are missing? Uh, I think that Uh, was, Mankind. Rocky Mayavia versus oh, yeah. Sultan. Sultan. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and uh, yes, that's that's correct. Oh, that's what it was. It was Mankind and Vader was the tag team oh. against um, 
Mm, uh, Paul Vera was the uh, was it the manager. Who did they face? Oh, it's gonna drive me crazy. I can't think of of who it was. Uh, anyways, it it was a it was a good pay per view. I just I remember it. It it was for me. Oh, okay. It was Owen Hart and British Bulldog. That's, That's who it was. was, and they were the tag team champions. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Um, it was the first pay per view where, again, you contrast that against WrestleMania nine, and it was very very different right it felt far more real and less charactery than wrestlemania 9 and um like i said really opened up that uh that uh attitude era and here's the fun fact too i don't know if you remember but so bret hart came in as a good guy stone cold came in as a bad guy they did the double turn and i think to even more solidify his um turn they brought him back in the main event to kind of screw the undertaker um or no to screw psycho sid uh and um and undertaker ended up winning and then after that bret hart formed the new heart foundation with Hmm. british bulldog owen hart you know that whole jim nine heart so very interesting. It was just a turning point for a lot of a lot of things yeah. in WWE. And Shawn Michaels, I don't think was part of that pay per view. He wasn't. He had he lost, lost his, smile. his smile. And uh, but I do remember him being involved. He was on the WWE Hotline, or yeah. maybe he came out and commentated or something. Um, so I think he did. I think he did. But yeah, that's that's so interesting. Uh, it's funny that you talk about WrestleMania 13 because I always feel like that one. I I don't skip it on purpose, but it's something that I just always glance over because it kind of feels like in my head, it always just goes WrestleMania 12 and then WrestleMania 14 where the attitude error just like takes off. But you kind of forget that there's that one in between. And it was really, it was Undertaker's first main event. It was the first time he won the world, uh, not the first time he won the world championship, but the first time he wins a WrestleMania main event. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's funny. It's just funny to me that the things that we pay attention to when we're younger. You know, yeah, and, it, and how it, that like forms how like this narrative of like, oh yeah, I just completely forgot WrestleMania 13 existed. Um, I also also don't know if this is a, a true fact or not, but I think that might be the first WrestleMania where they use the number 13 instead of the Roman was. numeral. I think you're right. I think you're because right. Because when you look at it, it says like it always says WrestleMania 13, here comes or no, WrestleMania 13 heat. I remember it had flames all over it. Do you mean like this? Well, I mean, no. it's kind of heat. actually, it's no. It says no. Yeah, you're right. No, but that that isn't the that isn't the that's cover. the Canadian one. Sorry, <laughs> that's the Canadian one. They're I'm not saying that's not the cover, but it, there's like I remember it being black and like almost yeah. Undertaker colors. And, yeah, and it yeah, had like flames around, around it. The... Yeah, yeah, that might be the blockbuster version. Yeah, it might have been the Canadian <laughs> blockbuster version. Um, but it, I mean, I, I, I can't go on. I mean, we talked about the first WrestleMania we remember or watched, mm. but to me, the pinnacle is always going to be WrestleMania 14 because I was there, and I'm not going to talk about it anymore because I have a whole episode on it and mm-hmm. I have an article up. But WrestleMania 14 to me will always be the one that has a a soft yeah. spot in my heart. So um, of course. And I still think to this day that that's one of the best, if not the best WrestleMania of all time. I mean, it's definitely, I mean, think about it. That was in the fleet center. And now they they do WrestleManias in stadiums. stadiums, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just a whole new different production. I feel like that was one of the last WrestleManias that could handle. And I don't even know they probably could have been in Foxborough stadium and, um, and sold that out. But that just remember that being, you know, outside of Madison garden, mm-hmm. it's like one of the last true WrestleManias in a, um, in an yeah. arena. So, wow. What a, what a stroll down memory lane. This episode's been, this is fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, no, I, I, have, I have one last fun fact for you. Cause sure. it has to do with both, both people that were involved. 
All right. You mentioned Bret Hart. We're talking about Hulk Hogan. Those two actually are the only two people to have what they call the WrestleMania hat trick, where they had three WrestleMania matches for the World Heavyweight Championship, the Intercontinental Championship, and the Tag Team Championship. The only two to do it. Interesting. Weird. Very weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's very interesting. Um, These are the stats that people come up with. I don't like I, sometimes I feel like I know a good portion about wrestling, but but then I read something like this what culture article and and I learned something new. So it was really cool. Let me ask you a question. When you think about the attitude era, like name mm -hmm. five things just quickly that pop in your head. Just quickly, five things, five different things. Five things about the yeah, attitude that, era. Just that reminds you of the attitude era. Uh, a dumpster match. It's the first okay. thing that pops up. I don't know why. Uh, okay. Obviously, uh, DX. Okay. Um, another thing that uh, comes to mind with the Attitude Era is Three Faces of Foley. It's okay. just it comes to mind. Um, obviously, Stone Cold Steve Austin and and like the Zamboni. I just think of that. Like it's just these are like I, I don't know if it's just free That's association okay. or what. You got me. Yes. I'm yeah. One, out. yeah. Uh, <laughs> one more. Then, you got one more. Uh, the last one I'll probably say is is The Rock. I mean, the, the, his rise to power there. What about uh, you? Well, the reason I ask is I was hoping you would hit on what I was going to come. Oh, what well, I was going to say sorry. next, but you did. You. That's okay. Something you just well, dropped on me right me, right here on the air, Vito. I know, but I was I was thinking sometimes we're on the same wavelength, and sometimes I I, I was thinking you would hit this, but to me, one of the the things is um, Jr. and the King being commentary. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, wouldn't you agree that would be one? If now that I say it, you're probably, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, now that you say so, it, of course. So WrestleMania 13 was the first time that they um, commentated oh. together by themselves. That is awesome. There you go. Yeah, that is and awesome. so okay. I, yeah, that, that's why I said that because I, I I think now that I mentioned that you you probably didn't think of it because obviously you, you you hit on everything else, but realistically they're the ones that voice the Attitude Era. So more so than anybody, like mm -hmm. I feel like they're ones that 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 kind of represent that and it was very interesting so there, there you go there's my facts for you there it is we're full yeah. of insight here at strutting from gorilla on wrestlemania it's season it. it's like our christmas as a wrestling fan mm -hmm. um and we're in the pinnacle of it here we we're gonna have a show um next week that, that uh with hopefully with with sarge yeah with sarge he's a mm -hmm. busy man you know he's out there doing card expos and uh you know, commentating or not commentating, but doing the PA for um, the revolution. Yeah. So, you know, he's, he's a busy he's a man. When we get him yeah. on here. Yeah, we're glad he we're, comes with us. Me too. Me too. And um, I think, you know, it's going to be a busy, busy month here. This is a, a really hyped up WrestleMania. Um, so we, we'll see. I'm, I'm, I can't wait to talk about this card. I got so much bent up, pent up like energy here. Yeah. Um, that it'll be good and you know i i'm excited man yeah. i'm excited it's a good time of year me too and you know, like you said Vito, next week we're going to have our wrestlemania preview episode so be on the lookout for that stay tuned and you know once we drop this episode today you know share with us share it in the comments share it on, on the socials tell us about what your first wrestlemania memory is i think it'd be really cool for everybody to kind of share what their experiences are so we'd love to hear from you guys but uh that's our memories, and until next time, folks, keep on strutting, jabronis.